Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Second National Thoroughbred Owner Conference and to Gulfstream Park. Now please give a warm welcome to our Master of Ceremonies, Tom Durkin. success in Lexington, Kentucky in January, and we had great speakers and great uh, communication between our audience and the featured speakers and our panels. It was all great. And so this year we decided we're going to add pina coladas, palm trees, four scantily dressed conga dancers and two pasty white 65-year-old legs. You might be asking, why am I dressed like this? And the answer is, they made me do it. <laughs> and I'm very glad that there are no young and impressionable children here. They could be scarred for life at the sight of this. But anyway, we're glad you're here. It's been a great year uh, for thoroughbred racing, of course. I don't know if you heard but uh, we had a triple crown winner this year. How about that? And I was so happy to see that nine times. I walked into the announcer's booth at Belmont Park thinking that I was going to achieve the dream of my life, that I was going to call a triple crown winner, and I was going to walk out of the booth that day having achieved that nine times. I walked into that booth, silver charm, real quiet, wore out one phone his head, Big Brown didn't even finish. Smarty Jones ran a third quarter in a mile and a half race in 22 and four fifth seconds. Everything that possibly could have gone wrong went wrong nine times. So then I retired. And Larry Comus walks in, and for the first time in 37 years, he calls a Triple Crown winner. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you so much. But it was great to have a Triple Crown winner, even though I had nothing to do with it. So uh, here we are, folks. Um, oh, yes, yeah, take off these glasses and put on these glasses, Tom. Um, you're here. Uh, for the second annual, and uh, we'd like to thank our hosts and presenting sponsors. Please give a round of applause to the Jockey Club, uh, the Thoroughbred Owners and Breeders Association, Owner View, Caneland Racecourse, the New York Racing Association, Woodbine Entertainment Group, and the Stronach Group. You'll have uh, several opportunities in the next few days uh, to meet and greet at the uh, sponsor suites. Uh, they're located at the uh, entryway here. So take an opportunity to go out there and uh, meet and greet and uh, see what they have to say, our sponsors. Uh, it's right outside as you uh, uh, exit the uh, facility this morning. In addition to our hosts and presenting sponsors, uh, take a look at the many, many 
organizations and industry groups who stepped up in a variety of ways to uh, lend their support for this event. And so just a few housekeeping uh, things to get through to you. There's a few things that you uh, might want to have. First of all, uh, this lanyard that's going to get you in and out of here. And if you're riding on one of the buses uh, that goes to and fro uh, from the various hotels to the uh, owner view, uh, you'll need this to get on. And also on the back, uh, because if you're uh, uh, old aged like me and you can't remember anything, we have it written right down here for you, all the events and what takes place when. You've also been provided with uh, this nifty little magazine. It's got all sorts of great stuff in there, great articles and stuff about ownership and the game in general, and also this being the 21st century, uh, you can access uh, all of this information on an app. So, and, and I did it uh, just yesterday, very easy, simple. So you go to the app store, and then you just uh, search for uh, Jockey Club events, and they've got the app down there. It tells you who's here, when it's gonna happen, who, what, why, when, where, and how, and it's all very easily achieved by getting on the app. So another thing that we started uh, this year, and we're going to ask you a little bit later uh, to fill out uh, some forms or leave them online, um, about your suggestions, your feedback about uh, what you liked, what you didn't like. And one of the things we discovered last year was that the people wanted to have more personal interaction with the panelists. They had been up here and uh, on stage. And we have what's called a breakout session. I had to look it up because I didn't know what a breakout session was. But basically, the panelists that will be uh, here uh, will be able to meet you face to face. And they'll ask, you can ask them anything you want. Horse racing people, I, and I, you know, I worked for NBC for many, many years in ESPN. And uh, the people at NBC, I mean, these guys covered every sport, you know, baseball, basketball, football, the Olympics and got to know a lot of sports writers over the years too, being in the game, and all of them said that the most approachable professional athletes are people in horse racing. They're, the hockey gets very good grades from these folks, by the way, but they love working with horse racing people because we're so approachable. So one of the great and important things of this uh, conference in the next couple of days will be an onus that's upon you. People are going to be up here answering, asking questions. You can go up to them personally, interact with each other, engage with everybody that's here, with the exception of the conga dancers. That's mine. So there is that. And oh, what's next in line for Tommy Boy here? Uh, oh, our welcome speaker. Um, if you know anything about our welcome speaker, uh, Oh yeah, you know what? Before we do this, let's we have a video presentation that uh, we want you to see. So you take a look at that, and when you do that, I'm going to do you all a big favor. I'm going to change. take their first steps, the promise of potential. When I started my own business, I worked like crazy. I worked seven days a week, 14, 16 hours every day. After five years, I had a little money in the bank, and I figured it would be nice to have a riding horse. I went to the first farm I called, and I did not know much about horses. I bought it, and I trotted around and started to jump the first <laughs> evening. That farm had a few racehorses, and he took me to the racetrack. I, I found it very, very fascinating uh, for the simple reason, uh, you know, I've been involved in making products, metal, plastics, nothing to do with nature. And so for me, that was a great equalizer to have something to do with nature. And the more I got into it, the more I liked it. As they grow, training begins. As they gallop that first mile, they put in their first work. They learn the routine of champions. And after months and years of work, it's race day. 